Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the boot up process on your routers and switches. And to understand how they boot up, you need to know about the different memory locations on your device. There's four built-in memory locations. First up, we have ROM, the read-only memory. Then we have flash. On older devices, that will be installed in the chassis on the motherboard. On newer devices, it's a removable compact flash card. Then we've got NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM, and finally the RAM, the normal random access memory. You can also use an external USB memory stick plugged into the device as well. Okay, so first one is read-only memory, the ROM, and that is what is used when the device is first powered on. ROM has got two main functions. First is the power on self test. The post test will check for any problems with the hardware. It will then load the bootstrap. And the bootstrap will look in flash for an iOS software image to load next. If an iOS image can't be found in flash, then the device will show the ROM on prompt at the command line. That means the device has failed to boot up if you see a command prompt that says ROM on. The ROM monitor is what it stands for. That can be used to recover a missing or corrupted software image. In that case, you can boot from USB or an external TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol server, to recover the device. And the instructions for doing that can be slightly different depending on the model of router or switch that you need to recover. So to get instructions, just search in Google for Cisco ROM on recovery for your particular platform. We'll have a look at that at the end of the lecture when I do a lab demo. Okay, so we had the ROM memory and then the flash memory. So ROM does the post test and loads up the bootstrap, which then looks in flash memory for an iOS system image. It will load the first image that it finds there by default, but you can override that with the boot system command. Now, when you get the device initially from the factory, it's just going to have one software image on there, but you can upgrade that device because Cisco come out with newer versions of the software regularly. So in that case, you can download the new version of the operating system, and then you can copy it down to flash. In that case, you'll have two copies, two different system images on flash now. So when the system boots up, you're going to need to tell it which one to boot from. It will default to choosing the first one. So to make sure that you get the newer image, the command to use is boot system and then flash and then the system image name. That's a global configuration command. Next type of memory is NVRAM. So when the system has finished loading the iOS system image from Flash, it will then load the startup config configuration file from NVRAM. And the saved startup config then becomes the current running config in RAM. If no startup config file is found, then the system will load the setup wizard. So if, no setup, if no startup config file is found, it's because you've just factory reset it or it's just actually come from the factory. Whenever you enter a command in iOS, it takes effect immediately and goes into the running config in RAM. To make your changes permanent across a reboot, we do the copy running config to start up config command, and that copies it into NVRAM, which will be used the next time the system boots up. The reason it's designed like this is so if you're working on the router or the switch and you make some kind of catastrophic error and then you can't get to the switch or the router anymore, you can just pull the power out of the back, 
put the power back in, boot it back up again, and it will boot back up with the old startup config before you'd made the error in the running config that caused you to lose connectivity to the command line. Okay, the last type of built-in memory is RAM, the random access memory. So the iOS system image and the startup config are loaded from flash for the system image and from NVRAM for the startup config into RAM during boot up. And RAM is then used as the normal working memory of the device. And if you're wondering, well, why don't we just keep everything in RAM then? The reason is that RAM is volatile memory. It does not survive a power outage or a reboot. So we can't keep the files in there, but we need to keep permanently. They need to be saved in persistent storage like our flash and our NVRAM. A couple of other things to tell you. First up, the VLAN database. That file is the VLAN.dat file. It's just on a switch where it, it's, it saves the VLAN information. And that is saved in either flash or NVRAM, depending on the model of the switch. I know we haven't covered VLANs yet. Don't worry, we'll cover that in a later section. I'm just mentioning it now as we talk about the different memory locations. And last thing, the system can also load a system image and or startup config from an external TFTP server rather than from Flash or NVRAM. That is not recommended though, because the device will not be able to boot if it loses connectivity to that TFTP server. So the only reason you would ever really do that is if you want to learn, load a new version of the system image and there's not enough flash memory capacity on your device to store that, then you can save it to an external TFTP server instead and boot from there. But really not recommended because if you lose connectivity to the TFTP server, your device won't be able to boot. Okay, so that was all the information. Last thing is to give you a demonstration of all this in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.